Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 29, Part 10. I will just have to be careful which one to bite then, Luna teased. Candace wiggled her ears a little, bouncing the tufts a bit. Luna's head darted forward like a viper as she snagged one between her teeth and nipped its tip suggestively. Insight took this as a cue to return the favor to Luna as she somewhat ineffectually tried to grab the much taller Luna's ear. Candace noticed Insight's lack of practice with a body didn't help her either, as she instead fell into Luna's wing. Luna laughed softly. So, my little pony, what do you want to happen this instance? Candace just smirked, as Insight didn't answer so much and just became as seductive as a little ball of adorableness as she could. After Insight being nothing but a disembodied voice for so long, she was not going to deny her anything. Though she was tempted to join in, she wouldn't. She still needed to figure out what her relationship with Insight truly was. Until that was nailed down, she wouldn't be joining her in any physical intimacy. Candace was ripped away from the mindscape as a stinging pain erupted in her ear. Her hoof moved towards her ear, hitting Luna in the face and causing the pain to spike. A warm liquid then ran down her ear. It took her a moment for her mind to realize what had just occurred. I'm so sorry, Luna. I wasn't expecting that so soon. I didn't actually hurt you, did I? She said with genuine worry on her face. Luna laughed. You shall have to try harder than that to slay me. Luna's blood magic reached out, pulling the blood from Candace's coat and staunching the wound. If I were to seriously have a chance of slaying you, it would be with a well-timed choke. I'm certain I wouldn't stand a chance against you in battle. Candace said with humor in her voice. Hmm... Luna looked thoughtful. Poison choke is a tool for assassination. At least some of the inconveniences it causes could be considered extreme disadvantages, should one ever have to defend themselves. I don't even really want to know what poison choke would do to me. Probably turn me into a stallion or something. Candace quipped. Her wings were struggling to try and reach the sky, as she was fighting the natural reactions of feeling insight getting what she wanted. Having trouble? Luna asked teasingly, extending her wing towards Candace's. Yes was Candace's one-word response. Luna let her wing fall. Is it really too much of a burden? I can offer you a peaceful rest, a duty to be done, or a similar distraction. I myself have things I must attend to. My sister will not let me tarry after being late with the moon this morning. If nothing else, it's an exercise in self-control. How long do you have before you have to get going? I was hoping to ask some questions at some point. There is also the matter of the phobia I just found out about before you showed up asking who Insight was. Candace said, hoping that she would get a chance to have that discussion with Luna. I should be able to exercise any that you may have, but it will not be pleasant. However, it is something I am well practiced at. Luna said simply. The phobia in question is that both Insight and I have this fear of hurting either you or Twilight. Not just physically, but emotionally. I nearly freaked out earlier at the thought of what you and I did after you accepted me possibly hurting Twilight. And then I remembered that I had asked you about that. You had managed to assuage my fears since I was so distracted, but after the fact, it came back. I had to force the fear out. Candace laid it all out. You have nothing to fear. Do you intend to betray us? Do you intend to attack any pony that I care for? And do you intend to endanger Equestria? If not, then you have nothing to fear. No matter how your attempt to seduce Twilight goes. You've said before that if she had flames in her mane, that you would ask me to step back and let her reconsider. That came across as permission with some safety advice, am I reading that correctly? I don't want to misinterpret what you said. Candace asked, with just a hint of worry, but still seeking clarification. Yes, that is right. Though if you did let her have her way with you in that state, I would not mind. But know that it would be her passion ruling her, and not her mind. I don't think that she would care, but she might be embarrassed over it. Luna ended with a playful smirk. I see. Thank you. I don't think that it'll be an issue then, at this point. I'll let you know if things wind up being inaccurate, though. Candace stated, her worry seeming to be assuaged. No, if that is all. Luna said, turning to leave, letting both of her wing and tail trail along Candace's back suggestively, as if by accident. Candace lost her battle of self-control against their wings, as they suddenly got their chance to display their full glory. One last thing? Candace asked, pointedly ignoring the fact that she had just lost the battle with her wings. Luna looked over her shoulder. By the way she licked her lips, if she didn't have somewhere to be, Candace would be sharing Insight's fate. Candace reached up and gave her sovereign a goodbye kiss. That is what she would call it, despite her body trying to turn it into more. Luna briefly returned the kiss, before ending it and nipping at the end of Candace's muzzle with her fangs. Luna walked into the shadow behind the door, as if it were a tunnel fading from view in its depths. A voice came from the far side of the room. <sighs> you lucky mare. 
Stryker said, now leaning on the wall in a shadowy corner, seeming to gratefully take in her display. After taking a moment to insist to her wings, who was actually in control, Candace turned to Stryker. Hey there, Stryker. Nice to see you, Captain. Candace looked to her compatriot with a smile on her face. So, anything you want to get done before the party? He asked with a hint of intrigue, walking from the wall over to her. Her body glowed for a moment in her telekinesis, as all traces of dirt and foreign contaminants were pulled off and headed to the bathroom disposal. It should be in there. Just needed a clean up. I had breakfast already, so you're welcome to the mango if you like. I'm still allergic to them. Show off, he said, playfully checking her in the shoulder. His horn darkened with shadows as the mango was lifted in his aura. Oh, you poor thing, he almost whispered before devouring the fruit. The apples and oranges put up a brave fight, but they ultimately didn't stand a chance. I just needed to back up against the insurmountable defenses of the mango. I'm glad you came. He laughed and shook his head. How did you not get fired or imprisoned while working for the stuck-up solars? I kept my mouth shut most of the time. That and I wasn't interested in Princess Celestia like I am with her sister in Twilight's. You and about half of us. Hope you're not the type to get jealous. He said, leading her out of the room. I just want her to be happy. I'm not the jealous type. So, how much did you win petting on me? Candace inquired. He shrugged. After having to pay for all the drinks last night in your first party that you skipped, maybe a few thousand bits. Oh, well I'm looking forward to the after party. Shall we? Candace trotted alongside him, and he grinned. Sure, he said, leading her off. A royal dinner. Luna was still searching her emotions. Her life had changed. In a way, she had never been happier. She had Twilight, and now the fate decreed Candace. The only thing that warmed her heart the most was Little Star, her daughter. She smiled. Luna tilted her hoof, looking critically at the other side of the bit that she had been given. The visions, that burning skeletal twilight. She feared that the only reasons things were going well was fate giving her a brief respite. The peace and comfort that she now had wouldn't last. Fate knew something terrible was going to happen later. The present was just an advanced apology for the next round of torment. A tender nuzzle broke Luna from her thoughts, as Twilight pressed against her side as if to check if she was still here. Luna wrapped her wing around Twilight, and unashamedly trapped Twilight's ear with her teeth and started nibbling. Twilight crooned softly. Luna... She weakly complained. Come now, I have to reward my brave savior. Luna trailed a hoof down Twilight's back. She could feel Twilight's resolve crack, as Twilight pressed against the motion, letting her eyes close. Celestia politely coughed. Luna looked up around the table, meeting her sister's eyes, a twinkle in her own, saying, What? in a most unbelievable act of innocence. It is so nice. It is so nice to be able to sit down like this again, Twilight. Celestia said, her eyes fixing on Twilight, who paid not a single, smallest bit of attention. Tia had spent time gathering the ponies that would soon be arriving. The least Luna could do was make sure Twilight could pay some attention. Twilight, Celestia's watching. Luna whispered into her betrothed tear. Twilight suddenly sat up straight, pulling herself from Luna's embrace, doing her best to seem unflustered and completely unfazed. The adorable blush and the slight tinting of her wings speaking of her desire to hide behind them proved that she had utterly failed. Luna was feeling hopeful so far, nothing had gone wrong. Twilight adorably coming to her rescue and threatening Tia had put her in a much more forgiving mood than she would have otherwise been in. Yes, Alicia? Twilight asked. It was good to see the anger and hate were not the first things that jumped out. Twilight must have been coming to terms with what had happened faster than she thought. Celestia finished a sip of her tea, before responding. Have things been at Ponyville? She asked, with an interested look on her face. Luna could, clear Luna could clearly see that her sister's mask was in play, but at least she seemed to be giving this meeting her full attention. Things have been... interesting. Twilight began her expression with a mix of uncertainty, embarrassment, and fond remembrance. Luna smirked. Twilight could be so adorable when she was like this. Oh? Celestia inquired. You know, just the normal things. Twilight quietly trailed off. Letting Twilight and her sister do their dance of spending a lot of words to say next to nothing, she turned to her own refreshments. Luna took a deep drink from her beverage of choice. Coffee was currently Luna's best friend, and she might have just considered marrying its adventure if they were still alive. With her magic so depleted, she dared not just ignore her fatigue. She had not intended to make Candace one of her chosen, but when she picked her, the words that she said, she was a silly old Maritimes. Thankfully, her sister had taken care of the moon for her, avoiding more rumors of Nightmare Moon's return. She laughed in the privacy of her own mind. Nightmare Moon was back, and soon Luna would be married to her as well. Luna looked back to Twilight, not able to hide her smile. She shifted a wing to wrap around her Twilight, who looked up at Luna. 
a conversation with Celestia pausing. Luna glanced at her sister and started with a warm voice. It's good to hear the two of you getting on so well again, but be warned I'm not letting you have her back. She finished teasingly. Twilight is her own mare and has long completed her training. She's capable of making her own decisions. That being said, I do believe that you both have made your intentions clear. Thank you. Twilight said a little stiffly. It was odd to see Twilight not falling all over herself with the slightest praise from Celestia. I hope that you two find happiness with each other. Celestia said. Why, thank you, sister. Luna said before grinning at her. So, when are we going to find you a partner? Soon you will be the only unmarried adult Alicorn. Luna teased affectionately. Perhaps next century. Celestia said carefully. How oh, at this rate Flurryheart may be married before you, Tia? Luna jested, and Celestia nodded. Well, that seems likely. She stated as simple fact. That's horrible. Twilight said, speaking up. Why? Celestia leaned forward, looking with interest to see her reaction. The hesitation made it clear that Twilight's first few answers were aborted, before even a single syllable was spoken. Don't you get lonely? It is what our ponies need of me. And besides, I'm content enough with my duties. Celestia's mask said, perfectly sincerely. Luna snorted. She could have stopped herself, but chose not to. I can't believe you still tell yourself that lie. Twilight glanced back and forth between the two sisters. Stuck between surprise and concern, Luna could see a small edge of satisfaction for the briefest of moments, when Celestia wasn't looking at Twilight. It was most likely Knight's influence. Or, at least she hoped it was. Damn, imagine being told that. Just saying how others will be married before you. I mean, it's not a race. I get it, it's all teasing and all that, but damn, that's harsh. Anywho, let's get on to our super generous donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coldhard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Only One Thing, and Twinkie. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Lyrae, Will, Chris, Dospo, Delta Omega, Jack Cadge, Rune Scythe 9852, Madman Stan, Lizzie Perkett, Drake Love Dragon, Hunts and Omen, Stephen Bingham, Line God 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hadzaza, Convair, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.